Hi there, my name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics and also the program leader for the physics of astrophysics program at the University of Lincoln. And I want to use this video to introduce a certain type of orbital resonance. And this is known as mean motion resonance. And that's a specific type of resonance for orbiting bodies, basically. So orbital resonances generally occur when the periods of two orbiting objects, could be more actually, but at least two, have a simple numerical relationship. So that basically means that they will orbit with some ratio of one another. So let's say we've got two objects here. We've got a larger object in the center, which is like the bluey purple one. Then you've got two objects orbiting outside of that with the yellow and the green orbit there. It could be planets orbiting a star, could be moons orbiting a planet. But anyway, with mean motion resonances at least, it involves the orbits of two or more bodies and is known like an orbit-orbit coupling. There are other sorts of resonances that involve like the rotation of the object and its orbital period, the rotation of one object and the orbit of another, and that would be like spin-orbit coupling, but that's a separate video entirely. So this one here, we're interested in just a orbit-orbit coupling, essentially. So basically put, mean motion resonances occur when the orbital periods are in a ratio of small integers. So what I've done here is I've put the yellow orbit or the, the object that's on the yellow orbit, I should say, in the, in the center one on two orbits against one orbit of the object on the green orbit. That makes sense. So basically, if you if you know your Keplerian laws or if you don't, then obviously check out some of the other videos. But the closer you get to the more massive object, so the shorter the orbital period or yeah, basically the closer it is to the bigger object, it's going to have a shorter orbital period. It has less to go round and it's also orbiting faster so that it doesn't actually go fall into the, the center object. So that means that the yellow one is orbiting with a shorter orbital period than the outer one, which is green. And if you set them up so that one is two and the other one is one, then you end up with a two to one orbital resonance. And this will be a mean motion resonance. That means that the inner one goes around twice for one orbit of the outer one. It means they will always pass each other at the same point. So it's given us the ratios here. So N1 would be one object and then N2 would be the second object. And that would give you your essential, your, your ratio between the orbital periods. And it will be a ratio of some integer. So here you go, just to point out really, N1 might be the inner one n2 might be the outer one and it's just the ratio so we know that the inner one is going around twice and the outer one is going around once now n is the mean motion okay so what is the mean motion well the mean motion is given by this expression here and it's just 2 pi over t where t is the orbital period how long it actually takes to go around and if you, do, if you put those basically in, in the previous one, you can then work out what the actual mean motion resonance would be. So if we go back to this one again, as I previously mentioned, actually, this would be a mean motion resonance of two to one. And you can get all sorts of ones. So you can get a three to two, maybe you can get a four to one, and you can get chains of them occurring as well. So it doesn't have to just be two bodies. If you have more than two, so let's say you have three, four, that would be known as like a Laplace resonance. So you end up with like a Laplace chain. That's a form of mean motion resonance. So an example actually is Pluto and Neptune. So Pluto and Neptune are on a three to two mean motion resonance. Neptune goes around three times for every two orbits of Pluto. But we also know that Pluto actually crosses Neptune's orbit. And it's that it's this kind of mean motion resonance that keeps it in this, I say kind of unusual orbit. It's these gravitational perturbations that are interacting and causing this and keeping it kind of where it is as well. So as I mentioned previously, just to give you an example really, because, well, you, you all want examples, the Galilean moons of Jupiter. So you've got Io, Europa, and Ganymede here. These are in a Laplace resonance, which is what basically pairs of mean motion resonances. So here, Io is going around four times for every two orbits of Europa and every one orbit of Ganymede. Now on the actual um, 
orbit plot that I've done like times two, times four. It's kind of the other way around. Basically, Ganymede takes four times the orbits of Io to go around, which is why it's times four there, if that makes any sense. So that's a Laplace resonance where you've got pairs of mean motion resonances occurring kind of in this sort of chain. And Jupiter's moons are a pretty good example of that. Now, these mean motion resonances, they can stabilize orbits. So they can maintain the body's relative positions over a long periods of time through their gravitational interactions. An example might be Neptune and Pluto. Neptune keeps Pluto on its orbit despite it crossing its orbit and making it elliptical. So they can have a stabilizing effect, the, these gravitational interactions. But they can also destabilize orbits as well. So they can do different things. For example, Jupiter can cause significant effects on asteroids in the asteroid belt. It can destabilize them. That then leads to collisions with other asteroids. They can be ejected from the asteroid belt. They can then go into orbits where they'll collide with other planets. So they can stabilize or they can actually destabilize. It kind of depends on the system, really. But anyway, thank you for watching. And if you enjoy or you find these videos helpful, then do consider becoming a member. I have extra videos in the member section and it also just helps generally support this channel where I can make free educational videos for you all. So thank you for watching.